Hi, I'm Jacob Anderson, and this is my career option presentation on collegiate academic advising. A little bit about me, I am a fifth year senior in Family Studies and Human Services from Overland Park, Kansas, and I have been involved with the Kansas State men's basketball team for all my time here at Kansas State. And uh, that's part of the reason why I chose collegiate academic advising to do my presentation on. So why I chose academic advising for my uh, presentation is that it's a career that always, I've always wanted to uh, have a career that helps youth and, uh, and help a young adults succeed. And uh, I think college is a great way for that, uh, for them to help them succeed. And for my time at Kansas State, I know that my uh, academic advisors have been a great help to me. I've, my first two years, I went through two academic advisors because I switched majors. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna graduate from college or if I was going to drop out. So they helped me guide and put me in the right classes and put me in the right programs to succeed. And if it wasn't for them, I definitely wouldn't be in the position to graduate, uh, which I am today, and I'm actually going to graduate next Saturday. Um, I know that college isn't the easiest thing for a lot of kids. And that was definitely the case for me coming out of high school. I wasn't sure if I was gonna go to college or if I was gonna go to trade school or junior college. I didn't have the best grades in high school, but they weren't the worst. And uh, I think that my decision to come to college was one of the best of my life to this day. Um, I got an education, I found my true passion, which is basketball and helping youth. And for that, I'm really thankful. And like I said earlier, if it wasn't for my academic advisors in my time of need and my time of confusion, I wouldn't have been able to uh, figure that out and if they weren't there to help me along the way. Uh, another reason why uh, I chose this uh, career to present, present on is because uh, I've seen through Kansas State basketball the academic advisors that help with our basketball team, and the man who I actually, actually interviewed, Matt McCumber, who is the uh, director of student athlete development at Kansas State men's basketball, they have helped every single one of uh, our players immensely throughout the process. Uh, a lot of our players come from difficult backgrounds where they might not have received the best education, and they might not have received the best advice from uh, their friends, their family, and a lot of them, this is their uh, chance to get an education for free. And the way we can help them is to guide them and put them in the right classes to succeed. And that's what I learned a lot when I interviewed Matt, uh, was that helping kids is the number one part about academic advising and about uh, college basketball. If you're in it for reasons other than that, uh, you're probably in it for the wrong reasons and it's something that you should probably get out of because it'll eventually catch up with you. Uh, another reason why I chose this uh, major, this career, is that Kansas State has a fantastic academic advising program and uh, it's something that I would like to do in the future, it, which is uh, major in academic advising in graduate school. And uh, it's something that I'm really hoping that I get the chance to do uh, once I'm admitted and uh, hopefully I get accepted into that program. So when I interviewed uh, Matt McCumber, who is our, like I said earlier, the Director of Student Athlete Development at, for Kansas State Men's Basketball, I uh, asked him a few of the questions. Uh, like what are the responsibilities of your career? And our interview, since I know Matt, was more formal than anything. And uh, it was more formal and it was kind of just sit back and forth talk because I've known him for four years now, ever since I was a college sophomore. But when he uh, answered these questions, it's mostly, uh, he said for the responsibilities, it's overview of uh, the student athlete's academic progress making sure they're in the right classes, making sure they're doing well in those classes, coordinating tutors for those uh, student athletes. Um, if they do need help uh, outside of academics, helping them get the right help if they need counseling, if they need 
somebody to talk to. You always got to be there for them. Um, stuff like that. Also, uh, another big thing, which is we like to get our student athletes involved within the community of Manhattan. And a big part of that is setting up community service. So we do a lot of events where uh, we have kids come into the office and into the uh, basketball facility and we show them around, they shoot around with the athletes and it gives our athletes uh, volunteer hours as well as helps them connect with the uh, community and makes them role models for the kids, which is also a big part of what we want our student athletes to be here in Manhattan and uh, for, student, for kids in their communities. Um, I asked him what he enjoys most about the job and the one thing that he said was uh, watching each senior uh, walk across the stage at graduation that he's worked with. Because some students have easier paths to graduation than others. And uh, seeing those kids that he helped uh, get to graduation, which is the ultimate goal in each student athlete, is for them to graduate with a collegiate degree. And seeing them walk across the stage, it's like all his work and their work put together has all culminated into something greater, which is them getting a, de a degree, which without K-State basketball without athletics, collegiate athletics, uh, scholarships for those kids, they might not have the chance to do otherwise. Um, the challenges of the job, uh, there's a couple challenges that he said, like dealing with um, Division I rules, getting those kids into school sometimes, you have to uh, like uh, go through certain methods and um, procedures to get them into school with all the transcripts and test scores and going to the NCAA. That can be challenging, he said, and it's it's not super hard, but it's more tedious work than anything. And uh, also some more challenges is just sometimes student athletes, they're tired at the end of their work day of working out and practice and weights that they might not have the energy to do their schoolwork. So sometimes they fall behind during the season whether that be because of practice or games, because they're gone for travel, that's always hard. So you gotta get them motivated and bring energy so they can have energy in the workplace uh, when they're working on their schoolwork up in the uh, academic offices. And uh, so here, another part, a reason why I interviewed Matt, I asked him how he got this job. Matt started out like me as a uh, student manager at Illinois for Coach Weber. And uh, obviously I'm a manager for Coach Weber at uh, Kansas State. And he got this job, he graduated, went on to be a graduate assistant at Southern Illinois for one of our assistant coaches who I also work with. And um, he got his academic advising degree at Southern Illinois, really found out it was something that he really enjoyed, went and did the same thing at Northern Illinois uh, basketball and got promoted to the director of basketball operations, which is less involved in the academic field and more involved in the basketball field of things, organizing games, scheduling practices, uh, things like that along those lines. And uh, he didn't really like that. He went back into business because he got his business degree undergrad at Illinois. Really didn't have a passion, passion for that, wanted to get back in basketball and into academic advising. The position opened up here and he applied for it with Coach Weber and luckily he got the opportunity and he told me it's been one of his uh, favorite jobs that he's had since he's graduated. And he's been to Texas A&M, Northern Illinois, Southern Illinois, working in Dallas at a bank, something that he's really enjoyed throughout his time here at Kansas State for the last four years. Um, for the chances and advancement for this job in basketball, it, it's different than other jobs. Uh, to advance in the basketball world, you kind of go on and you leave academic advising behind if you want to advance in the basketball world. But if you want to uh, advance in the academic advising world, you kind of bounce from school to school is what he told me to, uh, what is what he told me. You bounce from school to school and try to uh, rise and like be a director of academic advising or, or something along those lines. But for basketball, like what he did is that he went from academic advising at Northern Illinois to director of basketball operations because there was a pay increase, which uh, we'll go over in a slide or two. And uh, also he wanted to get back into basketball because he missed it after managing because he wasn't dealing with basketball as much. Um, the educational requirements for this job 
is that a bachelor's degree in most of these jobs is preferred, but or is required, but a master's degree is uh, is required, and uh, that's something that I know and I've learned about, and I need to. Uh, that's why I'm looking into Kansas State and a few other graduate schools across the Midwest and in the South uh, to get my academic advising degree, degree so I can have these opportunities like Matt had in the future. Uh, qualifications for academic advisors. Most collegiate academic advising careers will require a master's degree in academic advising, like I had said in the slide before. And uh, skills include organization, being able to organize kids, not only keep your own self organized, but organizing kids' schedules to where, where they can succeed the best. Organizing how, where to put their difficult classes and, and their easier classes in the same semester so that they can succeed and they're not hampered down by uh, 15 hours of all extremely difficult classes, especially if you're dealing with student athletes, 15 hours of difficult classes, including 40 hours a week practicing and traveling during the season can really uh, mount up on a kid and make it really hard to succeed. So that's something that you really wanna manage and uh, make sure you keep track of so you're not uh, giving the kid more than they can handle. Um, you wanna be able to speak with people well and interact with people well, obviously, because you'll be dealing with people on a daily basis at all times of the day. You're talking with people, students, student athletes, um, co-workers. It's, just a, it's a people-based business and connecting with people is something that you really need to be good at because if you're dealing with a kid and they don't trust you or they don't believe in you to, that you can help them succeed, they're not gonna open up to you and you're not gonna be able to connect with them on a deeper level so it won't be the best connection for you or for them to help them succeed in the future. Um, one of the uh, difficulties of this job is that if you move from university to university that you have to memorize and know the policies and the standards of graduation and uh, other policies and laws at the university because if you go from Kansas State where uh, graduation requirements are different than at uh, Wichita State and you go there and you don't know that and you set a kid up for graduation based on the Kansas State requirements and the kid only has Kansas State requirements and not Wichita State requirements then they're not going to be able to graduate and then you're put in a bind and you put that kid's future in a little bit of a bind and tied up without graduating so that's something that you really want to avoid you got to be keep uh, keep up on and just check at each school, see which is different. I'm sure that there's a, uh, a process that they take you through that you learn everything. So that's just something you wanna keep an eye on. Um, like I said, an ability to, to connect with students on a personal level is uh, something that is very important. I think that for me, it's something that I could really succeed at, which because I know a lot of kids uh, don't have the easiest time in college. And I know for me, it wasn't that way. I came in, I was put on academic probation, I thought about dropping out, my mom got sick, my sophomore through now, she's still sick, but she's doing better, and uh, that was something that was really hard for me. So I've had lots of trials and tribulations throughout college, but um, I think that'll help me realize where some kids are at when they're going through their, um, when they're going through their collegiate experience. and. Something that I'll look back on is how my academic advisors dealt with me and how they told me how I can handle things, who I need to talk to, if I need to go to the Office of Student Life, if I need to get counseling for something. Uh, something that my academic advisors were really good with me about and something that I hope to learn from them and learn in my uh, classes in grad school where I can help better myself to help better the students that I'm working with. So for salary and the job market information, I know salary for a lot of people is a big deal. And for me, it's not. Money has never really been an object for me. I grew up in a pretty uh, well-off family in Overland Park, Kansas. We never really struggled all that much, but uh, 
something for me. My parents have told me to always chase my dreams. No matter what the money is, don't worry about the money. Just do what you love because that's the most important thing. Uh, medium salary, medium salary for academic advisors in 2016 was uh, $39,626. And this number does vary based on whether you're at a private institution, a uh, four-year university, a community college, based on the level. Uh, if it's a larger school, if it's a smaller school, public, private, it all uh, kind of adds up. It, it varies based on that because if you go to a private school, there's probably more money involved in that school than a state school. And uh, so salaries can be based off of that. And then uh, heads of student academic counseling earn on average $62,883 per year, which is something that I've thought about trying to do, climbing up the ranks and uh, trying to do that. Or I'm also thinking about trying to stay in basketball. So it's something that I'll have to think about and uh, both things I'm very passionate about. So it's something I'll have to sit down, talk with my family and uh, see where uh, it takes me, but either path I, I'm, I'll be extremely happy with. Uh, academic advisors who attain master's degree earn 15000 more than their counterparts who only earn bachelor's degree. And like I said, this is kind of counteractive to what I said earlier. Uh, it would be nice to earn an extra salary because I do plan on having a family someday, and that is extra money can help provide for my family. Uh, and I mean, it's something that you never really want to turn down. And I feel like not only does a master's degree give you an opportunity to earn more money, it gives you an opportunity to learn more and help uh, better the students that you're working with and give them uh, the knowledge that you learn in master's school and graduate school and earning your master's and apply that to them and help them uh, better and be able to uh, be more prepared for them throughout your, uh, all the knowledge that you learn through graduate school. The pros and cons of this, uh, this career. So obviously pros, helping students, helping them succeed and become better uh, students, student athletes, better people. Um, that's something that is a big deal with me and something that I really want to do helping students overcome the obstacles they face in college. Uh, it's not bad pay. It's not bad pay, uh, it's decent pay. You get to work your way up. You can, do, you can take uh, classes to help you earn more if you need it. And uh, I mean, it's a job that I really wanna do someday. I think that it encompasses everything that personally I would like to do by helping kids in the collegiate uh, atmosphere and helping kids succeed. It's just something that has always been really important to me. Um, cons, you're not gonna be able to help everybody. And that's something that I'll have to work on because I do want to help everybody. And you can't, some kids it's just hard to, hard to reach. We've had a few at Kansas State in my time that I've seen that are just hard to reach. And they end up either transferring or they drop out of college and pursue something else, which isn't the, worst thing possible, but it's just you can't help everybody. Uh, sometimes there's a limited market, not all schools. Academic advisors tend to stay in it for a long time, so sometimes there's not a lot of turnover in the field. And then uh, sometimes you have to acquire a certain certification depending on each state. Uh, each state you go to, you might have to take a few classes, get certified uh, based on the university that you're at. And uh, that's something that might require money or the university that you're at might pay for but it's just something that you always gotta keep up on. But also, it's not a bad thing because you just get to keep learning more, which will help your students more. Uh, so that's not always a bad thing. Here are the references uh, for my presentation. And that is uh, I got where I got my photos from, where I got my articles from about the salaries and the turnover in the job market. And uh, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.